So the big news uh, coming out of San Diego Comic-Con this year for uh, writer Jeff Lemire is he's uh, going to be jo- launching a new JSA title along with Absolute Flash. Uh, but I wanted to talk today about JSA. And I wonder, Jeff, if you can start off by telling us why is this a, a project to come back to superheroes for you uh, with uh, uh, with DC? Um, and specifically, you know, what is it about the JSA that made it an attractive project? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. I mean, JSA, those characters have always been my favorite superhero characters, definitely my favorite DC characters. You know, I, um, when I was really young, I think the first comic book I remember getting as a kid was a reprint of some of Paul Levitt's JSA stuff from the seventies. So it was kind of my first exposure to comics was JSA and I've always sort of loved them. Uh, so it's kind of a book I've coveted, you know, as a writer, I've really wanted to do them. Um, but when, you know, when I was really heavily involved with DC originally back in, you know, 2011, while well, around the new 52 era, JSA wasn't really a part of that, that version of the DC universe. So mm-hmm. um, it just didn't really line up. But uh, so coming back now, um, it was kind of hard to say no to this because it was something I've always wanted to do. And take a crack at, at doing these characters and and being able to do it in this way where they're kind of relaunching the universe in a way and kind of making it more accessible again and and bringing both the Justice League with Mark Wade and, and Dan Mora and then our JSA together and launching at the same time. It's, it's a pretty, pretty great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, certainly those uh, JSA, JLA crossovers, you know, back in the day, it was a yearly event. It was it, it was really cool. Are you looking to bring back that classic feel or are you looking to do something where it's a little uh, what people might not expect with the, the JSA? You, you know, these characters have been around since the golden age. So I think people sort of have in their mind what's established. But I know you like to turn things on their heads sometimes. Yeah, um, to some degrees, I have to fight my own nature a little on this book because I feel like the best version of the JSA is to do the JSA. <laughs> so I want to do, a, I, I want it to feel like a classic justice society comic, you know, um, I want it to feel like it fits right in line with, you know, infinity Inc and all-star squadron. And then to Jeff Johns is justice society. All those comics I love so much. I want to feel like a continuation of that, you know, but of course, you know, some of yourself ends up obviously going into it as well. So, uh, you know, that's inevitable, but I really did want this to feel like a return to that classic kind of storytelling and these characters that people know so well. And, but if, you know, we're also doing it in 2024 and these characters are from 1945, originally some of them. So you have to reflect that and you have to kind of ask what that means, you know, what do the values of the golden age mean in 2024? And that's kind of one of the underlying questions of the book, you know, where you have the younger generation of, heroes in the justice society some of whom are kind of questioning that like why are we still acting like it's the 40s it's 2024 we should change the way we do things we should be more proactive more aggressive and then you have others that want to kind of uphold the the values that have kept the jsa going for so long so there's that conflict within the group as well you know it's interesting that you say that because uh, i wanted to ask you about character dynamics it's one of the things uh, you if you're not the best you're like top three uh you know even things like minor arcana that you had come out recently the the character dynamic between uh you know the mother and daughter is very interesting so i'm sure that's going to be a, a part of it right something that you enjoy yeah. you know you're talking about the younger heroes the older heroes and that interplay yeah that's really the best part of the book for me is, I mean, you know, obviously all the action and everything is really fun, but my favorite part of doing books like this is sort of having those inter inter uh, team dynamics, you know, and you have all these little kind of groups within the group, you know, you have Alan Scott and his two children are, are in the, in the team. So you have like a family within the family and then you have, you know, Jesse quick and our man are married and you have, uh, you know, there's just all these different dynamics going on to play with, and they're really fun. And, and that's kind of how I've been thinking of the book. A little bit less like a, a superhero team book and more like a big ensemble drama where um, from issue to issue, we might focus in on just one or two characters at a time and really give them a chance to shine. And of course, their stories feed into the bigger one. But um, yeah, I, I love that stuff. I love the the character work and the, and the, all, the, all the great opportunities you have to put these 
you know, different generations of characters uh, together and sort of have them play off each other. Yeah, and I think kind of going hand in hand with that, we know at least for the, the first arc, the, the villains are going to be the Injustice Society. Again, classic. And now we're talking about character dynamic and interaction between hero and villain. Yeah. Is Did that play into you choosing uh, to go with the Injustice Society right off the bat, or was it just more, hey, they're classic, I got to bring them in? Well, I mean, when you have a team that's as big and as powerful as the Justice Society is, you need something that, that, that can counter that. Uh, so it felt like... a a natural sort of choice. Um, and then of course you try to choose the Injustice Society members to kind of play off each other well and also play off the heroes like you're saying well. So it, that's a lot of fun. And I think the just the Injustice Society storyline is, uh, it, it, it kicks off right away, but it's going to be kind of playing out across the first 12 issues of the series. It's a pretty big storyline. And uh, as it grows, it'll have pretty big implications for not just this star book, but the whole DC universe. So it's a pretty, pretty ambitious and big storyline. But when you have a team to speak, you kind of need something like that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, and when we're talking big and a lot of action and what have you, uh, it's a heavy lift for the, the artist a lot of times. You know, you yourself being an artist, you know, drawing you know, so many characters and squeezing yeah. them in. Um, so remind everybody who the artist is uh, on the series. And I hope you haven't been working on too hard. How's the collaboration been? Yeah, it's Diego Orlategi, um, and I, I wasn't super familiar with the stuff before I, I got the job, but he he did the Jake Eric miniseries that came out uh, recently, and I saw that, and I knew right away, yeah, I knew right away he he would be great at sort of the, the really dynamic action and the really kinetic page layouts, and it brings a lot of energy to it, and it's very modern feeling. But what surprised me as I got into the first issue with him was how he did those quieter scenes, you know, the interpersonal kind of one or two characters, dramatic scenes. He could really capture the personalities and the the emotion going on in each scene. So it's rare that you get an artist that can do both both those things so well. So I'm pretty lucky to work with him. And yeah, it is it's a it's a heavy lift, this book. There's a lot of characters. So I, I do often feel quite <laughs> quite guilty writing the scripts, but uh, <laughs> hopefully he can handle it. Yeah, I mean, his uh, like you said, the the Jeremy Adams Jay Garrick um, series was yeah. awesome, and uh, yeah, it was great. You know, tons of action. And, yeah, he he did a fantastic job. Um, well, you know, we were talking before about uh, you know the, the the size of the cast and you being familiar with these characters, but you know, wanting to do something a little bit new. Is there anybody, whether it be on the Justice Society, the Injustice Society, who when you started writing them? they kind of surprised you and, and mm. you took them in maybe a different direction or did some things that you weren't necessarily expecting. Yeah, totally. Um, I always loved Dr. Midnight. That was one of my favorite characters as a kid. I don't know what attracted me to <laughs> Dr. Midnight, but something with a costume or something. And so I've always loved that version, you know, and, uh, and, and then in this, this current just, uh, just society book, we have the Beth Chapel version of Dr. Midnight. Well, I wasn't super familiar with, I knew her from reading Infinity Inc. as, as a kid, you know, in the 80s. But um, so she, while she was in the book, my plans for her weren't super elaborate yet. But as I started writing that character, um, I really fell in love with writing the character and with with the potential. And she's quickly kind of become maybe my favorite character in the book. And her importance in the story is just keeps growing and growing as I kind of discover more that I can do with her. So that one's that's been a like, really pleasant surprise. Well, as big as the cast is, uh, I, there's been so many people that have been a, a part of the Justice Society. You mentioned All-Star Squadron, you know, same kind of thing. So uh, are we going to see some of the other characters dip in and out? You know, uh, obviously Power Girl has been a big uh, part of the team, but I you know, don't yeah. think she's there. But then even characters like uh, Amazing Man, you know, uh, yeah. who, who yeah. Are Liberty Bell, th that sort of thing. Um, any plans there? Or, you know, you might not have anything concrete, but you know, maybe down Yeah, the line. you know what? Um, the initial roster that I chose, is pretty big, but it couldn't, I couldn't get everyone in, you know? And so there's right. inevitably, yeah. there'll be some fan favorites that are in the first few issues. I know Stargirl is a fan favorite who's not in the first few issues, Power Girl, uh, Adam Smasher, a few others. Um, but I, they will be in the series. I've actually already written scenes with all those characters subsequently. So, well, well, people may be disappointed not to see a certain character in the first two, three issues. Rest assured that I do have a plan to kind of eventually use everyone that I can. So yeah, if they all have a role, they will, they'll be in it. Great. I'm sure fans uh, will be happy to hear that. 
And I, I feel like uh, the excitement around DC has never been higher, uh, you mm-hmm. know, maybe new 52, but I mean, I feel like this even surpasses that with this all in uh, initiative, the all in special just came out this week. People are super yeah. excited about it. How much will we see the, the, the other books tie in with this? Uh, you know, JSA has been a lot of times kind of a, its own thing. You mentioned most of these characters being from uh, the, from the forties, but how much are we going to see uh, things like, you know, dark side and absolute universe is separate at first, but, um, are you going to kind of be in your own corner or, or are you going to try to play in the sandbox with the other children a little bit? No, you got, I think, I think when DC, like as, as a reader and a fan, DC has always been at its best for me when the JSA is a big part of things, you know, um, when the JSA and the JLA are both running concurrently and are both strong books and can play off each other a little bit. So I really want it to feel like it's a big part of the universe and not just in its own corner, you know, um, and I've already written scenes with the Justice League in the book, for instance. And uh, Mark Wade and I have had pretty extensive conversations about uh, inevitably doing some JSA JLA stuff. And so, and also since I'm writing one of the absolute books, you know, I'm I'm kind of in the loop on what's going on there and on the bigger universe right. building there as well. So yeah, it's uh, if if I do my job right, it'll feel like its own book, but it will still feel like it's a big part of the universe, and you'll see you'll see it play out in a you know it touch up against all the things that are going on in the bigger TCU. Yeah. Do you find uh, that you enjoy that challenge um, when it's not kind of siloed? It, does it make it more challenging? It can. I mean, it, it really depends on the book and on the, on the project, but you know, for J- J- JSA, I feel like it, it makes sense for them to be a bigger part of that universe and to play off the bigger storylines that are going on. Um, so I kind of, so far I've really enjoyed it and, it always helps when, you know, you're friends with the other writers on the other titles as well, which I am. So it's like, it's more of a fun collaboration and less of a burden, you know? Um, so yeah, in this case, it's so far it's been very positive. Yeah. yeah I mentioned earlier that it um, was announced at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, but it, everything that I've heard from, from talking to Scott Snyder and Joshua Williamson has a lot of this stuff has been in the works literally for years and you guys have had to kind of keep it under wraps as excited as you've been to, to talk about it. So uh, how long uh, ago did you know that you were uh, on this project? How long did you have to kind of plan it out? A long time. I think I was trying to remember today. Um, I think I first came on both Absolute Flash and and JSA uh, maybe almost a year and a half ago. So it's been, yeah, you know, I started talking to Scott and then the editors at DC probably last summer summer 23 so um and i've been working on jsa pretty actively for about a year already so uh yeah it's which is good because it's a it's a tough book to write there's so much going on that you really do need to plan out so i'm lucky i had that lead time and uh same with the flash so yeah at least a year maybe more how far in uh do you have uh outline plotted that sort of thing like where 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 are you at (laughs) Yeah, JSA, I have 24 issues outlined and oh, wow. I have pretty, pretty tightly plotted the first 12. I'm almost, you know, I've written eight full scripts. So, yeah, it's, it's, I hope to do a really substantial run on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned um, kind of that era in the 80s with, you know, All Star Squadron and Infinity Inc. and then moving into uh, Jeff's run, which obviously yeah. is classic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, your, your chance to kind of put your, stamp on it you, know, you mentioned being a fan of them for a long time yeah um does does that does that play in you know you mentioned a little bit before trying not to you know do things that have been done before uh but do you feel any pressure any any nervousness i mean i feel like you've been doing this a long time maybe people might be surprised if you if you are yeah no i i, I don't feel pressure i'm just excited by it you know i, I have been doing this for a while so i've kind of been through it all at this point but um so i i, I don't really feel nervousness or anything i feel confident in what we're doing and i have a great partner in diego so that always helps and um yeah i'm just excited for this i I really like you said uh, you know jeff's run was is his original run went for i think 80 or 90 issues and uh, i would love to do something significant you know really really be a part of the legacy of these characters and the way that those previous writers were i can yeah well uh DC fans, I feel like, have been uh, hankering for a JSA title for, you know, a long time uh, after Rebirth. And we got Jeff's run, but there were, uh, you know, some some delays. 
So yeah. I, I feel like if you have that much plotted out, you know, already eight issues written, it should come out on a regular basis. And I'm sure JSA fans are really looking forward to it. What's the response been been like? Have you been hearing a lot of people, you know, really excited? Yeah. Can't wait to get their hands on it. A lot of buzz. Yeah, I think I think it's like you said that people have really been hungry to have these characters back in a big way, you know, because really since the new 52, they haven't been a huge part of the DC universe. And um, so to have have them back and kind of launching at the same time as this all in initiative. So that really feels like it's part of the excitement and part, really like part of the fabric of what's going on, I think, is what people have wanted. So I, I can kind of I've been sensing that excitement for sure. There's a lot of love for the characters, I know. Yeah, again, I, I think DC's making a lot of really smart decisions uh, during this all-in era. You know, we're just at the start of it, but, uh, you know, Scott and, and Joshua Williamson both talked about wanting to take the best things about the New 52, being able to do something fresh and new, like you guys are doing over in the Absolute Universe, but honor the legacy and, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff in, in the main line. It's hard not to be excited, right? Yeah, I mean, I, if, as a fan, I'm excited because I love these characters too, you know, and I know some of the stuff that's going on and it's it's pretty cool, you know. I think the uh, the New Gods book by Rom V is going to be incredible. I've seen so, holy cow, it's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, so there's there's some really cool stuff and it's a, it's a great time to be a DC fan. It really feels like you get a little bit of everything, like you said, because in the main DCU and, and Justice Society and stuff like that, we're get to hold on to this legacy and this history that everyone loves. And then in, in the absolute uh, universe, we get to build something kind of new and fresh with these, these familiar concepts. And so you, you kind of get both and uh, it's exciting. Yeah. I, I mean, and brilliantly a brilliant in story reason that you're able to do both. Right. I mean, that all in yeah. special and what's going on with dark side is just, uh, just yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I give Scott and Josh a lot of credit in coming up with that concept. Cause it's really, launch both universes into an interesting kind of era. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, best of luck with the series, Jeff. I, I know it's a ton oh, of work with such a big cast, uh, as, as you said, and I'm excited to, to read it and to talk about it on the show. Uh, as we're winding down here, one last uh, question, something in the first arc, let's say, or the first issue, uh, a moment, a scene, something that uh, you can't wait for it to be out there so you can see a uh, fan reaction. Does, uh, obviously, we don't want to spoil, but does something come to mind? Can you give us kind of an idea? Yeah, I mean, I try to put something like that in every issue, but the end of the first issue certainly has quite a twist. Um, and then issue four, uh, Dr. Midnight kind of takes center stage for a while there, and it, it goes in some pretty unexpected and Things, some things came out that I wasn't planning that really surprised me and I've really latched on to. So yeah, there's hopefully every issue will have something kind of shocking and cool and exciting. Awesome. Well, uh, everybody, uh, be sure you're telling your comic shops now that you're going to be reading JSA pre-orders, uh, will really help out Jeff. It helps out DC helps out your comic shop. So let yeah, them know nice. that you're going to be uh, picking up JSA every time uh, it comes out. So, uh, again, Jeff, thanks so much for your time, and uh, can't wait to check out the series. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. You can find the Comic Source Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or whichever podcasting app you prefer. Please tell all your friends about us, subscribe, and rate us. The ratings really help with our visibility and our ability to reach new listeners, especially five-star reviews on Apple. Also be sure to visit us at lrmonline.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover all our other great pop culture content. If you want to email us, the email address is thecomicsourceblog at gmail.com, or you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash thecomicsource. Do a search for The Comic Source on Facebook and Instagram to follow us on those social platforms. All three spots are great places to find out when we release new episodes as well as follow all our convention coverage. So once again, we want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.